How is it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about exhaust. As some of you guys have already seen, I've had a handful of exhaust on the FRS already. It's one of the most popular modifications you can do to pretty much any car. Uh, however, I don't actually have any exhaust components on the car right now. I was getting ready to do a header install for you guys and I ran into some rusty nuts and bolts so I had to take everything off. And since I do have everything off, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to kind of go through through all the different exhaust components and how they affect the performance of the car when you start upgrading them. So first off, what does an exhaust do? Well, there's basically four main functions, controlling the noise level, uh, directing the exhaust gases away from the car, improving the performance, and optimizing the gas consumption. That being said, sometimes the OEM exhaust components can be very restrictive and heavy, so when we start upgrading some of those parts, we can in turn gain more power, shed some weight, and completely change how the car sounds. Now let's take a look at the OEM exhaust system and break it down into the individual components. Starting off in the front of the car, bolted to the bottom side of the engine is the exhaust manifold, or header as most of us would call it. The header takes the exhaust gases from the cylinders and merges it into one pipe. It also incorporates the catalytic converter, which is used to help break down those unsafe gases before they leave the exhaust. Bolted to the end of the header, we have this little guy. This S-shaped pipe is called the overpipe. The reason why it's called an overpipe is because it directs the exhaust gases from the header over the subframe steering rack and sway bar of the car leading to the next component which is the front pipe. On the front pipe of the car you're going to see another catalytic converter which is on the front section here and then on the back you're going to see a resonator that helps to get rid of any buzzing or droning that might occur and this connects to the mid pipe of the exhaust that leads to the mufflers and then it ends with the tailpipes. Now every component of the exhaust is able to be replaced and upgraded, so I'm gonna work my way from the back of the car to the front. We're gonna kinda of go through all the upgrades that you can make. One of the most affordable ways of changing up the exhaust tone on your car is by installing an axle back exhaust. As the name suggests, this replaces everything from the rear axle on back, which happens to be the muffler section. It's the heaviest part of the exhaust, so not only are you shedding some weight, you're also gonna change how the car sounds. Now, don't expect any power gains from this as it's purely for sound, but you can go with either a muffler version or a muffler delete like this Remark Boso Edition axle back that I had installed on my car a couple months ago. The next step up from that is a cat back exhaust. This replaces everything from the catalytic converter on back. So in our case, everything after the front pipe. This allows for a little bit better exhaust flow, but usually only amounts to a small increase in power that most of you guys probably aren't gonna notice. However, there is gonna be a lot more options when it comes to a cat back versus an axle back. So you can pick and choose which one you think sounds and looks the best, like the Remark R1 spec exhaust that I'm probably gonna throw back on my car once I have everything put back together. So after that we've got the front pipe which as I mentioned before houses the second catalytic converter. You can get an aftermarket one that has a high flow cat that's a lot less restrictive than the OEM one or you can completely get rid of it altogether and go with a catless setup. You also have the option of going with or without a resonator. Just keep in mind that if you get rid of one or both of those components you're going to end up with an exhaust that's a lot louder. Moving closer to the engine, we've got the overpipe, which is tucked up there. Now, even though this is a small portion of the exhaust, it's not something you want to skip on because it can become a restriction point that's going to diminish any gains you get from upgrading the rest of your exhaust. That leaves us with the headers, which is probably the most important exhaust component on this car. An upgraded header has the most potential out of all the exhaust components to make you more power. It's also an essential part of getting rid of that notorious torque dip on these cars. You're gonna see two main categories when it comes to headers, unequal length headers and equal length headers. The difference being the length of the runners. As you can see on this FT Speed unequal length header, the runners on this side are longer than the ones on this side. And that not only provides us with some more mid-range torque, it also results in that iconic Subaru rumble. 
for equal length headers, the length of the runners are gonna be identical, which helps with exhaust scavenging and that provides you with more top end power. You're also gonna see catted and catless options, which really just comes down to emissions, although the catless option is gonna give you a bit better exhaust flow. That basically covers all of the different exhaust components, but let's quickly talk about the different materials that they can be made out of. By far the most common you're gonna see is stainless steel due to its affordability, strength, and corrosion resistance. But you're also gonna see a lot of those components made out of titanium as well due to its strength to weight ratio. For example, the Tomei Type 60S that I had installed on my car weighed 14 pounds as opposed to the 38 pounds of the stock exhaust. With those weight savings, however, expect to see a bump in cost as titanium products are usually quite a bit more expensive. Another option you're gonna see mainly for headers, overpipes, and front pipes is ceramic coating, which is gonna help contain uh, the heat inside the engine bay and keep it where it needs to be. That wraps it up guys. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you're looking for some new exhaust parts, if so, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more videos. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.